Welcome to a special presentation of Sellout Crowd, Conversations with Coach. I'm Bob Stoops. I'm taking time to talk with my friends and colleagues in the sports world to get caught up and share some stories. But first, I want to say thanks to these sponsors, Rose Hill Builders, First Fidelity Bank, and Louie's Bar and Grill. Today I'm joined by a good friend. I've gotten to know this guy the last couple of years, Porter Moser. Uh, OU's uh, basketball coach, uh, been, a, been a great friend, another uh, Chicago fan like I am. But uh, Porter, welcome to the show. Thanks, Coach. Great to be here. Yeah, we, we got to hang out this spring at a Cubs game, right? We, uh, we both go have, have some ties back in the Chicago area. Where's your favorite place to go back that way? Well, I love Wrigley Field. I mean, I'm just a diehard Cubs fan, so that, that whole area – is is absolutely phenomenal. I'm a, I'm a pizza guy. Um, I love <laughs> Melnati's pizza. Um, but I just, you know, Wrigley Field is kind of my happy place. I'm with you. I was just at Wrigley Field to watch Iowa play Northwestern uh, a couple weekends ago and had a Your great time. Pardon me? Your alma mater. That's right. And you guys, I noticed uh, OU is playing uh, Iowa here in a couple weeks. We do. We, uh, we play them next um, – Next Thursday, Thanksgiving, and uh, in San Diego, uh, and part of that new Fox Sports uh, it's a classic there. So yeah, we play we open up against Iowa in that tournament. Well, we're we're going to talk about your current team and 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 how it compares to last year and the strides you're making. But let's go all the way back to your playing career. Let's let's talk about your, your playing career. Uh, you know, through college. You know, I I played at Creighton University and. Uh, you know, I played for another Chicago guy, Tony Baroni. Um, the three guys, my recruiting was very easily organized. The, the three guys that recruited me the hardest was Tony Baroni, Dick Fick, and Randall Handel. So, How about like, those names? So, <laughs> so, I can, so I was really organized in my recruiting. But uh, I played for him there and just had a great experience. We were, we were the first team in Creighton history to win 20 games three years in a row, uh, two NCAA tournaments. And that's where I decided to get into coaching. My whole family was in business. There was, I have no coach in my coaching tree and or my family tree. And uh, Coach Baroni just kind of afterwards was like, you know, why don't you volunteer? Um, and then uh, and, uh, and I bartended at night. And uh, I remember my dad asking me, he's, my dad was a CEO of Moser Enterprises. And he's like, you just graduated business. You graduated with honors. He goes, what are you going to do? And I go, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach. He goes, how much money are you going to make? And I go, well... I'm actually going to make nothing. I'm going to volunteer. And he, and he said to me, he goes, is that what you want to do? Is that your passion? And I said, yeah. And he goes, and you got to go for it. And that was a turning point to having that, that blessing. He was such an icon of my, my life to get into, to give me that blessing. But that's where I got into coaching was, was crazy. Yeah. Let, I let me tell you, my, my defensive coordinator, when I graduated, uh, my parents, same thing. What are you going to, I'm going to, I'm going to coach. They want me to be a graduate assistant. And I asked my D coordinator, who was my mentor and my coach, and he said, he said, if you can do without it, coaching, if you can do without it, do without it. But if you can't, <laughs> if you can't, go do it. So, uh, yeah. but anyway, uh, to finish what you were going to say. Yeah, so, so I went, um, so that year, uh, went to another NCAA tournament, and Coach Baroni got the Texas A&M job. And he, he brought me with him. I was the only person from Creighton he brought with. And, uh, you know, I, I ended up being the back then you were allowed two full time assistants and a restricted earnings coach. And so I was the basketball restricted earnings coach there to start my coaching career. I was there four years as that spot um, and with him. And then I, I then I went to Wisconsin, Milwaukee to get some recruiting experience and he brought me right back. So um, that he, he's coach Brony was instrumental as a as a player. And then he's the one that got me into this profession. Yep. And then I know you you got a history with uh, with Coach um, Rick uh, Majerus. Yeah, with Rick Majerus, because I know you've you've had a lot of fun stories <laughs> about working with Coach Majerus. Give us a couple. Oh, I guess a couple that that are easy to, to put out there on uh, on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know, he was he was so good to me. I learned so much from him. I actually started journaling. I've never journaled in my life. And it was just was there was so many outrageous stories, funny stories, and I always wanted to write a book. You know, I had a remember that book playing for night Steve Alford wrote. 
Yeah. And I always, I always love that book, you know, because I, I was so in trouble. What was it like to play for Coach Knight? And everybody always asked me, what was it like working for Rick Majerus? And I was going to write a book coaching with Majerus because <laughs> every day was different, man. And I mean, this, how unique is this? He took his staff, our first staff, when we were at St. Louis. He brought us to Milwaukee. We went to an inner city playground, told us to bring our notebooks. And he sat there for like, we sat there eight hours. And we probably had five lunches during that eight hours. And uh, and we, he just got an open. And he was teaching us his motion offense, teaching his man-to-man defense in, a, in an inner city playground. I'm like, I've never done anything like that in my 32 years of coaching. He was, um, you know, for him, it, every practice, he just loved practice. And, uh, you know, just so many stories, Coach. Um, I remember one, he, he wasn't, he didn't love to recruit. And he didn't go out and recruit a lot. Um, now he'd go into a high school gym and stay with that high school coach for hours. He loved that. He just didn't yeah. like AAU. So we were playing a scrimmage our first, our first year there. We were playing Memphis with Coach Cal was at Memphis, and we're doing a scrimmage. And he was mad at our starting point guard, so he brings he starts this walk on point guard named Paul, and he's like trying to throw it in his face. Our, our starting point guard, like I'm going to start Paul. He's tough. He's going. I know he's going to work hard. He's not going to lay down and die. So the first possession, Memphis's point guard just came, zip by him, scores. We're all sitting there. Second possession, zips by, dunks it. Third possession, goes down. Three in a row, he drives by Paul. Coach calls timeout, runs on the court, and he just starts MF and Paul. <laughs> Paul, what are you doing? I trusted you. I'll do this. And he goes, sits down, and all of a sudden, Paul Biancardi was on my staff, walks up, he goes, hey, Coach Majerus, you know that point guard's Derek Rose, right? And oh, Coach no. Bears goes, Coach goes, oh, I heard of that guy. I heard he's pretty good. We're all sitting there going. I mean, he just he just was so fun to coach Paul, with. Paul had, Paul had no chance, did he? Oh, he had no chance. He had no <laughs> chance. We're all sitting there going, we're going to start Paul Eckerly on Paul Biancardi or Paul uh, or Derek Rose. And uh, But Coach was – he was uh, the best teacher of the game that I've ever seen. I mean, he just – the attention to detail. Um, every – every me like he wasn't – um, he wasn't married, and uh, that was the hardest part of working the, working for him. It wasn't hard, the work ethic. I mean, I was just used to that. I mean, all the hours we put in. What was hard was I had four little kids, and he liked to go to dinner every night. And dinner was an event with him, like 10-course meal. He ordered everything. I mean, And it didn't start till 8 o'clock probably. It's exactly right. And he'd want to go, to a, he'd want to go all night. And I, I'd give my right arm for one of those dinners now. Because of yeah. the amount of basketball and and the other thing, coach, is he he wasn't a middle of the road guy. He either was at high end restaurants or greasy spoons. Like you'd <laughs> never catch him at Chili's. You'd never it, it was it was the it was the high end. And I mean, we X and O's on on linens, like what really nice white linens at restaurants we'd be X and O on, and then we'd X and O on napkins from Culver's. And, you know, that 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 was Rick. He sounds a lot like just eccentric, like Mike Leach. Uh, bless, bless, uh, God rest his soul. Mike was eccentric, different, uh, notorious night owl, and uh, didn't do things like everybody else did, but but highly, highly successful. And like you said, Mike, we we talk. You could talk football with them for for hours. Uh, yeah. it just sounds a lot like Rick. Absolutely. I, I'm just watching Coach Leach. I never knew him, but I knew. Uh, you know, your friendship with him, the stories you told me about him and just seeing him, you know, how funny and witty, but also how smart and innovative he was. He was just so yeah. innovative. I, I'm assuming same thing with Coach Majerus. And would you, you say that's your your biggest influence in, in, in the way you coach now and in what you put on the floor? You know, I, I think I'm, I'm really blessed. I think I've been able to take a work for some really good guys. And, and you know, I worked for Wimp Sanderson for a year and uh, – but like Tony was really good at running a program, like right. how he how he ran a program and the atmosphere there, the culture. Coach Majerus is probably my biggest influence X and O wise. You right. know, just the attention to detail, the teaching, the how to sit in a room and talk game plan with them and how we're going to stop a team, how we're going to score against a team. That process was was just so good uh, uh, that with Coach Majerus and. Uh, you know, I just I learned so much from him that way. So he definitely that way. Both those guys, I, I'm blessed to take two things from him: running a program and and a lot of X and O's. 
uh, you know, you, you came here, uh, Porter from Loyola, uh, just, just a year. This is your second year. Uh, talk about uh, just how hard it was the first year coming in now in this new world of, of transfer portals and NIL. But you've really, in my opinion, I was at the game last night, um, you know, with some of our friends uh, that, that are your buddies too. And uh, the team looks totally different from a year ago. We'll get into that in a minute. But talk about the challenges coming in in one year, the first year, and then how you're, you're make, taking the steps here in the second year. Well, you know, right when I took the job is like right when the transfer portal and the NIL hit. So everybody was in the transfer portal. So we had to start from from scratch. So I'm in the middle. You're, you're trying to hire a staff, do all the things you're doing as you as you get a job with a head coach. And then you're trying to build a complete roster through that. And there was just so much unknown with the NIL. Some schools had already been through it or, you know, at, at a leg up on it. And uh, it was just difficult. And uh you know, I really feel like I got some continuity now. Um, I lost my whole entire coaching staff, my first one. You know, two of them are head coaches now and one's at Duke. And just to, to get the, you know, to have that kind of, um, you know, to get a, some solid, you know, stability in your staff. I feel like my staff right now is 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 great. It's, it's really solid. I feel like this roster, top to bottom, we recruited the whole roster. And we're a little bit more intentional of the needs we had. Um, you know, when you're when you go through it a year and you've already established yourself, you really I, I just look back and I was recruiting to fill a roster and to, um, you know, and trying to the unknowns of the, of the transfer portal and the NIL. Now we got a little bit more handle on both of them. And I think we recruited to our style, how we really wanted to play We're right. way more athletic. <laughs> we can do some things defensively. We're able to, you know, push the tempo a little bit more and. Uh, I, I just really excited that I feel like this this group has been they're, they're a group of gym rats. They're they're coachable, and we got a long way to go. We got to get better. Uh, but that makes it fun to be to be on you know at practice with a bunch of guys that want to be there. I I know that feeling. A Amen. Amen. You know, I mean, some guys you. some guys the very best part of the day, and it's not everybody is, is going to practice, and those are the guys you want. No, no, one hundred percent. If you know, I, I feel like we have a bunch of, of we have zero energy drainers. You know how that is, man. You get right. you get guys that are in practice and trying to bring it down. And and when you have basketball, which is a smaller group, two or three of them can bring a group down. And we don't have any energy drainers. I, I mean, practice is high energy. Everybody, everybody's right. wired to get better. Starting yep. from my whole staff, and I just. Yep. One or two can bring you down, no, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Who, who, who are a few guys just uh, that the the fans out there, you know, that you're expecting? Uh, you know, not. I know you want everyone to have a big year, but who do you really anticipate the first couple, three guys that you're expecting a big year from? Well, you always rely on guys that have been through it with you. So Milo Suzan was was our starting point guard as a true freshman in the Big 12 last year. So he's been through it. So he he knows what to expect. He knows the terminology. He knows our standards. Um, Otega Uwe was another true freshman that started at the end of the year. So I started, I was starting two freshmen. And then Sam Godwin, who's starting at the five for us. Those three guys from last year, you know, can come in and like, yep. it's not new to them, you know, what we're doing in practice, how hard we want to go, how we want to do things off the floor. Um, so really relying on those guys. And then we brought in a great blend of newcomers. You know, JV McCollum is a high energy, fast guard. You know, the Trey Darthard's been through it. Rivaldo Sorez, um, Jalen Morris. We brought in some transfers that I feel are hungry, that are, that are hungry to, to, to do some things and, um, and have some new life here. And um, so I think it's a good blend of, of some, some guys who have been through it and some newcomers. I, I know the, the, the conference is challenging. I mean, it's the best basketball conference in the country. But I, I encourage everybody uh, to, to get to know you, Porter, and watch your team. Nobody has more energy or positive energy and, and a positive outlook and attitude the way you do. So I encourage everybody out there, fans, to get behind Porter. And talk to, the, talk to us about – the seat, you know, what it looks like this season and why we, you, you know, you guys are a fun team to come watch this year. You know, one, one thing is I just, I think our length and athleticism, and there's one thing about being athletic, but there's another thing of getting your athleticism into the game. 
And I feel like we, we, we got a group of guys that are getting their athleticism in the game. How do I mean? We had 20 offensive rebounds the other night. Um, right. Last night, we, 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 we missed 26 shots the whole night, and which is very good. And we, we got 13 offensive rebounds. So we, we rebounded 50% of our misses. That means you're getting you had 44, you had 44 points off the bench also. So you got depth. That's what, that's also huge coach. I mean, we, we, we feel like we're bringing in two or three starters off the bench. Rivaldo store has started at Oregon. You know, John Hughley started at Pitt. Uh, the Trey Dardhart started on the NIT runner up, uh, Utah Valley. Yep. Um, so we are bringing in off the bench, some veteran starters. They actually uplifted us the last couple of games coming off the bench. So I think when you, I think the key to is, you know, coaching is also, you know, with five starters, they all want to start. So I think that's my staff and I have a, we're really working hard to massage that, to, to really sell those guys. Hey man, we got eight starters. We got eight starters. Absolutely. And, and yeah. you're all starters. It's just, it, you know, it's just Majerus, you say starting's for high school. You want to be there in the finish of the game, you know? And yeah. uh, so and that's a, that's a big challenge we have. You you could keep whoever's hot out there a little bit longer, or you rotate them in. Maybe the starter isn't hot. The guy that comes off the bench is, and he gets a few more minutes. So be it. Absolutely. We, we've actually had a couple of our subs have had more minutes than our starters uh, a lot yeah. in these first couple games. And that's something I, I don't feel like I've had. You know, I've had to come in with some true freshmen or, you know, or some guys that haven't played much in their career off the bench. And I feel like I got some experience off the bench this year. Um, so people can – can complain about the transfer portal. Trust me, I've been right there because there are some tough things. We've lost we've lost a, a key guy each of the last two years right at the last minute. Um, but the positive is you can you can also get some guys, you know, right. get some guys to fill some holes. That that um, the key though for me though, I mean, I know you're the same way. You're you're really relational. I can just see yeah. the way you are in the community with people. You, if, if anybody goes an OU game, you, you, Coach Stoops is swarmed, and he's just so gracious to everybody. And you're really relational. You see your former players. Um, you know, you saw when you took over in the bowl game two years ago. It's just so much about the relation. That's the hard part about the recruiting of the transfer portal. Right. Sometimes it, it goes in 10 days, and it's hard to build relationships. You really got to do your vetting and try to take your gut feeling on on somebody's um who they are and their dna because the portal goes in like 10 days two weeks of recruiting and not like high school recruiting where you recruit a kid for over a year and and i would agree with you i think the number one job of a coach is to be relational meaning to with your players you can't be close enough to them and 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 then there's a lot of trust and and commitment to each other and i i think you you've got a chance of keeping your team together not, not to me, it never was intentional to have to be relational. I just cared about my players that much and wanted to be around them and be a, uh, you know, be a mentor and, and, you know, and a positive figure in their life. And if you do that in a really strong way, they'll give it back to you. Absolutely. And that's another thing with this transfer portal is, is we found this summer is what's the best way to build relations? Time, time, yeah. give, give them your time. And, uh, and that, that's what you have to, when you put this teams together, like we've had eight newcomers out of 13 scholarship players. So you have to spend nine, nine yeah. out of 13. So you, you got to right. spend time to be relational because you know what the players, players can see through it. Yeah, they can see right. through it. If, if, if you're phony, if you're not spending time and you're not real with them, they can tell, they can no, tell. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yep. You can't fool players and you can't fool a locker room. No, that's 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 a great line, and I've always been amazed at football coaches, coach. I I don't know to see the relations you build with the numbers you have. Yeah, I, I just think that's that's an unbelievable uh, task football coaches do. We you know we have to be intentional with us at basketball, but we have thirteen scholarship players and probably two or three walk ons. Our yeah. numbers are small. Yeah. We got eighty five scholarships and about one hundred and twenty total, but I I was very intentional about this. Walk into practice, put your arm around somebody, you know, touch this guy, touch this guy on the shoulder pad, ask, ask him how he's doing. You know, when they're stretching, you know, go from guy to guy to guy to make sure every day you tried to reach out, you know, and visit with, with your guys. So when, when you have a big team, you, you got to be more intentional about it, of relating to them. Definitely. 
any coach that's listening to this podcast, especially first time coaches or young coaches getting their first job at any level should just take it heart what you just said, because wow. I know this, I was, I was head coach at 31. I was the youngest head coach in division one. I. I was head coach at Arkansas Little Rock and your head spinning. You, you know, you're thinking, I got, I got to have offense. I got to have this. You're, 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 you're going a million miles an hour thinking about a million things. And if you just take what you just said of starting practice that way, you know, Absolutely. just taking the time, being intentional with that, that that goes farther than any play you could have diagrammed at the beginning of practice. No, right? no, no doubt. I again, just every young person wants an arm around. You know, they can be on their phones. They can be disconnected. But don't ever tell me any young person wants their, you know, leader figure, you know, whoever it is to put their arm around them and care about them. And if they do, if you do and, and they know you mean it, they'll do about anything for you. Coach, you just made me think of something that I also took from Coach Majerus. Is when I was younger, it, it, I'd get some. I just took it personally if a kid didn't play hard in practice, and sometimes I'd get so angry. And to my fault, I'd leave practice that way. Sometimes right. I'd leave practice mad at that kid, and I'd almost carry it over the next day, and I'd be the next day. And Coach Majerus was unbelievable. He could get on a player like nobody I've ever seen. I mean, he 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 knew how to go right at you. I'm telling you, when practice is over, he'd be like, hey, Barry, you want to go to my office and have a bagel, sit down and talk? Like <laughs> He just turned on this relational yep. stuff when practice was over, and I that just stuck with me. I'm like, man, I'd get I've, so mad at practice, I'd carry it over off the field or off the court. I've, I've done it before where I've overreacted. I'd grab that guy within five minutes, or when we left practice, put my arm around and say, hey, Johnny, you know what? I was wrong. I, I That was too much. I apologize. I know your work, you know, just don't ever be afraid to apologize if you did overreact. Right. And, and they appreciate that. You know, we're all human, too. Yeah. So, uh, well, well, Porter, you're off to a 3-0 and start. Talk about what, what comes up here in the next month, kind of leading up to Christmas break. Where are you guys at? So we, we got we got a, a, another home game, Texas Rio Grand Valley, uh, Friday. And then we get, we head out, and then we got a, a, a huge stretch coming in, end of November, December, we, you know. We're in that tournament. We play Iowa first, and then we play the winner or loser against USC Seton Hall. We have our game against Arkansas and Tulsa coming up. We got the Big East Challenge with Providence coming up. Um, Providence just beat Wisconsin last night. And then we got the Jordan brand games with North Carolina. So we could possibly play three top ten teams coming up in Arkansas, um, North Carolina, USC's in there, Iowa, um, and Providence. So we got – we got a big chunk coming up before we hit Big 12. And like you said, the last couple of years, it's, it's been not even close. Um, Big 12 basketball has been the number one basketball conference in the country. And uh, every single night seems like you're playing a ranked team. Um, so we got that coming up after Christmas. Well, listen, I encourage everybody to get out there, support you, support OU basketball, uh, women and men. Uh, you know, it's fun to watch. And uh, you're kind to give, give me this time here. Just wanted to get the word out. Uh, you know, in regard to OU basketball here at the end of football season that your, yours has begun. And I uh, wish you the best of luck, Porter, and I'll be coming out to watch you. You know that. Coach, thanks for having me on, my friend. I uh, appreciate you so much and what you stand for, what you've established here about culture at OU. The OU, OU DNA, they say, is, is, is one of the biggest draws I came here. And uh, so I appreciate you, Coach, and thanks for having me on.